welcome to Professor Slab, where we aim to make A-level biology as easy as we can. So the change in background is going to show you that it is now the start of a new topic. We will be looking at topic two. But if you're new here and you want to revise topic one and topic five, the entire playlist is already uploaded, so do check it out. But this video will be focusing on the properties of gas exchange surfaces in living organisms. You'll look at how the rate of diffusion is dependent on these properties and can be calculated using Fick's law of diffusion. And finally, you'll be understanding how the structure of the mammalian lung is adapted for gaseous exchange. So all organisms need to exchange gases with the environment, and this occurs through a process called diffusion. The surface over which gas exchange takes place is known as the exchange surface. So the surface area of an organism refers to the total area of the organism that is exposed to the external environment. The volume is the total internal volume of the organism. And you'll find that the surface area to volume ratio is basically just the ratio of the surface area and the volume of the organism. As the size of an organism increases, the surface area to volume ratio decreases as the volume increases with increase in surface area. Single-celled organisms like amoeba will have a high surface area to volume ratio, while large organisms like elephants will have a low surface area to volume ratio. A large surface area to volume ratio is really useful for single-celled organisms as this allows for maximum absorption of nutrients and gases and removal of waste products. The diffusion distance is short because of the small volume. Large multicellular organisms have developed adaptations to facilitate the exchange of substances with the environment because they cannot simply just rely on diffusion as the distance is massive and the surface area to volume ratio is really low. So how do large multicellular organisms maximize the surface area to volume ratio? So alveoli, which increases the surface area, is found in mammalian lungs. Fish gills have special structures called lamellae, which provide a very large surface area. Leaves have a spongy mesophyll layer, which increases the area of leaf cell surface that is exposed to the air. And animals with a circulatory system have a mass transport system, which helps solve the problem of internal diffusion distance. So mass transport system is a topic that is covered in topic one. So if you want a more detailed video on that, do check it out. You'll find it in the topic one playlist. So looking at diffusion pathways. So substances have a very short diffusion pathway when the distance between is very short. And this also very often have one layer of epithelial cells. So once again, it's only one layer so that the distance, the distance of the surf, exchange surface is really, really short. The cells can also be flattened in shape. Once again, the entire focus is to reduce the distance further. So uh, one such factor that contributes to rates of diffusion is the distance between the exchange surface. And different um, organisms will try to ma minimize this distance by having different adaptations. So now looking at concentration gradients. So there is a difference in concentration of the exchange substances on either side of the exchange surface. The greater the distance of concentration results in greater rate of diffusion. In mammals, the lungs are very adapted for efficient diffusion. The alveoli have a good blood supply and this removes the oxygen from the capillary side of the exchange surface and carbon dioxide is supplied. Mammals also have a very good ventilation system which en ensures inhalation and exhalation. So now looking at Fick's law of diffusion. So the Fick's law states that the rate of diffusion is directly proportional to the produce of the surface area and concentration gradient over the thickness of the membrane. So the rate of diffusion will double if the surface area of concentration difference doubles and the diffusion pathway halves. The following formula, which you can see below, can be used to calculate the rate of diffusion. So P stands for permeability constant, A is surface area, 
C refers to concentration and T is the thickness. So in most cases, they should be giving you this formula. So they will give you the formula. You just need to plug in the numbers, but it's better off if you do remember it just in case. But yes. So now we're looking at the mammalian lungs. So mammals have a well-adapted pair of lungs that are an ideal exchange surface for the diffusion of gases. This compensates for the low surface area to volume ratio that mammals have, as this mode would be a very inefficient mode of exchange. So amphibians use lungs and the skin for gas exchange. Lungs are also used, for ma used to maximize gas exchange while minimizing the loss of water across the exchange surface. On the other hand, when they're in water, the mode of exchange would be their skin. Move deeper into the different adaptations of the lungs. So the trachea is a tube that allows air to travel to the lungs. Trachea have C-shaped rings of cartilage, and they ensure that the tube remains open and does not collapse. It also provides increased flexibility when food is being swallowed. So the reason they're C-shaped rather than a complete ring of cartilage is to provide that flexibility as if it was completely it was a complete circle um, it's going to reduce um, the flexibility of the lung so the trachea has a layer of mucus lining which traps dust and pathogens and prevents them from further entering the body the airways also have a lining of hair called the cilia and the cilia wafts the mucus to the top of the trachea where it is swallowed and destroyed by the hydrochloric acid in the stomach. So now the trachea then further goes down to split into two branches called the bronchi. So the bronchi is very similar to the trachea, but they have thinner walls and a smaller diameter. So what you're going to notice with its um with its uh, features is that they have thinner walls which means you're going to quickly connect it to diffusion. So thinner walls means the diffusion rate is going to increase further. And you also have a smaller diameter, which reduces the distance once again, which means the diffusion rate is going to increase once again. However, the cartilage rings in the bronchi are different as they are in full circles. And this is because there is no need for flexibility in the case of the bronchi like you would need in the trachea. So now, the bronchi is going to further divide into bronchioles. So bron bronchioles are really narrow and they have self-supporting tubes within the thin walls. Once again, looking at the features of bronchioles, they are narrow, which means the distance is really, really short now, more shorter than it was in the bronchi, and they have thin walls. Once again, reducing the distance to help support diffusion. So they decrease in size and are closer they and the, so they decrease in size the more closer they are to the alveoli. The larger bronchioles possess elastic fibers and smooth muscles that enable the size of the airway to increase or decrease airflow. The smaller bronchioles do not have these smooth muscles but they do have elastic fiber. Alveoli which are found at the end of bronchioles so the alveolar wall is made of a single layer of flattened or squamous epithelium. So once again, if you notice this mention of single layer, it, you can connect it to the fact that the distance is reduced and that's going to increase the rates of diffusion. The squamous epithelium forms the alveolar wall and is very thin and permeable for the easy diffusion of gases. The elastic fibers surrounding the alveoli allow the alveoli to stretch during inhalation. Alveoli are adapted such that they are surrounded by an extensive capillary network and this enables carbon dioxide to diffuse out of the capillaries and into the alveoli to be exhaled, while oxygen diffuses from the alveoli and into the capillaries around the body. So this whole point is basically connecting to the fact that it ensures there's a steep concentration gradient. So the, the alveoli ensuring that there's a steep concentration gradient is going to increase the rates of diffusion further. So that is the whole point of this adaptation right here. And the layer of moisture lines the alveoli and this contributes to increased rate of diffusion. 
from Professor Snap today. Hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below and I will get back to them as soon as possible. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe.